Have you ever wondered what the most common execution method in history was? From being crushed by elephants to being hanged, drawn, or quartered, there have been numerous brutal methods used throughout history. But one form of execution in particular was widely used and had a chilling effect on the public. In this video, we will explore the gruesome history of gibbeting, the practice of publicly displaying the remains of executed criminals. We will delve into its use in different countries, the controversy surrounding it, and its impact on society. Stay tuned to learn more about this haunting form of punishment that was used to deter crime and terrorize the public. Throughout history, numerous execution methods have been utilized, ranging from brutal hanging, drawing, and quartering to being crushed to death by an elephant. However, one common thread that ran through all forms of public execution was that they were performed in front of large crowds. The primary objective of public executions was to deter potential offenders from committing crimes, as the spectacle of watching a criminal being put to death in a gruesome manner was intended to instill fear in the hearts of the public. Guy Fawkes, for example, was hanged, drawn, and quartered in an attempt to suppress any rebellion against the king. Nevertheless, public executions were often viewed by the people as a form of entertainment, with some even paying to rent rooms in houses overlooking key execution spots to get a better view. One of the most horrific forms of execution in history was known as gibbeting. This brutal practice involved suspending the remains of a dying or deceased criminal in a metal cage or body, which was then hung on a wooden structure for public display. This spectacle would be witnessed by the general public on a daily basis, making it an incredibly gruesome form of punishment. Gibbeting was commonly referred to as hanged in chains, and was frequently used as a form of punishment in England. The Murder Act of 1751 made it even more popular by giving judges the power to sentence murderers to being hanged in chains. However, it was also used for a range of other crimes, including sheep stealing, piracy, and even treason. Despite its widespread use, the practice of public executions was highly controversial, with many arguing that it violated basic human rights and was inhumane. In the 19th century, there was a growing movement to abolish public executions, and they were eventually banned in most countries. However, the use of the death penalty is still a conscientious issue in modern times, with many people advocating for its abolition on ethical and moral grounds. The debate surrounding the death penalty continues to this day, with some arguing that it is a necessary form of punishment for heinous crimes, while others believe that it has no place in a civilized society. The practice of gibbeting, which involved publicly displaying the remains of executed criminals, such as highwaymen and pirates, was common during that period. To discourage potential new offenders, the decomposing bodies would be hung from gibbets in the vicinity of busy thoroughfares or riverbanks with tidal areas. Execution Dock in London was one of the locations along the River Thames that was used to hang the bodies of convicted pirates in chains as a deterrent to others. This was done as a warning to others not to engage in piracy. However, there were some complaints about the practice, as tourists from other countries who visited England found it to be both barbaric and unsanitary due to the stench of decaying corpses and the risk of disease that was associated with them. The gibbet itself was sometimes used to keep the condemned person enclosed, although it was said to be inhumane. The cage was made out of iron bars, with the feet in stirrups and a bar running up to each side of the head to suspend the body. There were also bars on the inside of the legs, and crossbars at various points on the body. The hands were covered in pitch and hung by the side, while the face was covered with a piece of white cloth. The practice of gibbeting was not limited to England, as it was used in many different countries. In Germany, a Jewish financier named Joseph Seuss Oppenheimer was displayed in a human-sized bird cage outside of Stuttgart. Hitler later used Oppenheimer's story in his propaganda to turn the German public against Jews. The term gibbeting was often used to describe the display of human remains, 
including the practice of displaying someone's head on London Bridge during the Tudor period. Sometimes, the bodies would also be covered in tar or bound in chains, as this would prolong the decay of a criminal. For example, a murderer named John Breds in East Sussex was hanged and exhibited for more than 20 years inside an iron cage. The image of passing under the remains of a decaying corpse would be a strong one for many people living in towns and cities. In Australia, five years after gibbeting ended in England, the body of a murderer named John Mackay was displayed near the spot where he murdered his victim in Tasmania. This caused great upset, and the body was not removed until a friend of the victim asked the authorities to take it down, as he was disgusted with the images of Mackay's corpse rotting in the air. As previously mentioned, some criminals were displayed alive in some instances. They were caged here before being lifted into the air without a visible means of escape. This was done with the intention of causing a criminal to slowly starve to death and perish from exposure as someone would pass by the cage each day as they were noticed, slowly losing weight and slowly dying a painful death as the passing public made fun of them. Due to the high demand for female corpses at the time from scientists and surgeons for dissection and science, men were typically the ones on display. However, despite opposition from some, the majority of those present would find gibbeting amusing. It was a common way of expressing how justice was carried out. But consider residing near the exhibit. It would smell awful because flies would be feasting on the corpse of a criminal. Because of this, many people were compelled to keep their windows closed. Sometimes it would take years for decay to occur, and once the flesh had been eaten by birds, the bones would eventually fall through the cages. To prevent people from removing criminals from the gibbets after they had already died, precautions were taken. One pole was even covered in 12,000 nails to deter people from touching it. The cages, which cost a lot to make and would be used repeatedly for various criminals, were made by blacksmiths. James Cook, a bookbinder who killed another man in Leicester, received the country's last execution. Cook was executed in front of Leicester Prison on August 10, 1832. The cap he wore during the execution was pulled over his face, and his head was shaved and covered in tar to protect it from the elements. Later on that Saturday, his body was transported to a gallows, where it was exhibited on a specially constructed 10-meter structure close to a toll gate in Leicester. This structure had been erected in his honor. The event drew in thousands of people who came to see the spectacle, which was at once innovative and savage. The residents of the area, who were understandably upset by the display, filed complaints with the authorities in response to the incident. In response to this, on the following Tuesday, the Home Office issued instructions to remove the gibbet. Gibbeting, also known as the practice of displaying the remains of criminals, was one of the most gruesome and shocking forms of execution used throughout the course of human history. It was widely criticized, and in the end, it was determined to be unacceptable, despite the fact that its primary purpose was to act as a deterrent to would-be criminals. In spite of this, it was used for centuries before it was finally abandoned as a popular choice. As we wrap up this discussion on the most common execution method in history, gibbeting, it's important to remember that while this practice may seem barbaric to us today, it was a common form of punishment for centuries. The public spectacle of execution was intended to deter crime, but it also served as a form of entertainment for some, highlighting the complexities and contradictions of human nature. Despite its prevalence in the past, Modern society has moved away from public executions and other humane forms of punishment, with many countries banning the death penalty altogether. While the debate around capital punishment continues to rage on, it's clear that as a society, we must strive to find more humane ways to hold individuals accountable for their actions, while still upholding the basic principles of human rights and dignity. Thank you for joining us today as we explored the history of gibbeting and the evolution of punishment over time. If you found this video informative,
please consider sharing it with others and subscribing to our channel for more thought-provoking content.